In this episode of Tesla series, we're installing this upgraded and fully integrated instrument cluster display for Tesla Model 3 and Model Y. We'll show the installation steps for both Intel and AMD versions of the Tesla computer. What is going on everyone? Today we're reviewing this brand new instrument cluster display for Tesla Model 3 and Model Y. If you recall a couple of months ago, we reviewed this very, very integrated instrument cluster display. And this was our favorite then because it was very integrated, it didn't block as much airflow, and most importantly, it looked very HD and it went with the flow of the car. And that was the feedback that I received from all of you subscribers. But one of the biggest complaints that we had about this display was it was too small. Because of the size, it is this, this one is the 4.6 inch display. So what Hansho did is upsize the display, upgraded the display with new feature, and it is more in tune with what we are looking for. It is not super small like what it was. This is a 5.16 inch Linux based display. And as I said, there's a better UI, uh, totally new integrated design, and the installation is pretty simple compared to some of the other installations we have done here for other instrument cluster displays. So, what we're going to do today is I am going to show you in detail how to install this display. Uh, go on a ride along and show you what it looks like when we're driving it. And then I'm going to share my honest opinion about this display and really tell you if it is an upgrade from the one that we installed earlier. If you're new to the channel, we cover a lot of Tesla accessories in the market, especially for Tesla Model 3 and Model Ys, and we're one of the first channels to receive those accessories when they first come out. We have a lot of accessories on the way. We just got FedEx delivered about 20 accessories just today, so we're testing a lot of those accessories. If you want to see some of those accessories in these videos, please subscribe to the channel, give this video a thumbs up, and share our channel with your friends and families. Let's get started. So this is what the package comes with. Of course, it has this display with a single connection. So this is a very low profile design. So it only requires this one harness that we need to connect. And then they send you a pry tool, which we're gonna need to pry off some of that glove box panel in the bottom. And then they send you a single harness now for all Tesla models. So this one harness in the past they have to send you two different harnesses based on if you have the intel version or the amd version but this time they're including everything in this one wire harness so if you have an intel version this is what you're going to use and unfortunately we do have to tap into that difficult glove box plug so we're gonna have to remove that uh, panel and then go bypass this uh, with the existing Tesla harness. So if you have an Intel version, the installation is a bit difficult, but for an AMD version, the installation becomes much, much easier because this is a blue plug that you're gonna find on the side door panel. So this is on the pillar of your car. And then this is a bypass, again, on the side door panel. So you don't have to take anything to the front in the front battery. You don't have to worry about bypassing this cable through that uh, firewall. You don't have to worry about none of that. It's just a very easier to reach area, especially if you have the cars with the AMD installation. So. Let's go ahead and get this started with the installation. To get it started, we're gonna have to remove this dash panel and just take the pry tool that they send and start prying on this side panel. Uh, this is something we have done a lot in our channel. So our panel is probably very loose and yours could be stubborn if you have never removed it, but just be patient with it. Use a pry tool like this and then peel it out. If you have an older Tesla, you also need to remove this panel but because we replaced ours with this carbon fiber dash, uh, we don't have that panel here. And the newer Teslas are gonna have the same thing. But if you see a little slit on the top here, then you can use a pry tool to just pry on that slit and then this panel just comes out. We have demonstrated this past on other videos. Uh, so once you do that, go ahead on the right side. You also need to remove this, this door panel, the side door panel by just prying on it. Again, ours is super loose because we have done it so many times. Uh, now we're gonna go to the other side and do the same thing on the driver's side. So exact same thing here. Take your pry tool then pry on this panel. Yours is probably tight if you have never removed this. And then again, if you have an older Tesla, pry right here if you can see a slit, then this panel also comes out. To remove the dash, all you have to do is pry up on the edge here and do that on all sides throughout the dash. And this one just comes out. This dash is held down by several clips 
and um, it shouldn't require much force but again if you have never done this it might be a little tight but again don't use too much force this shouldn't require much force to make the computer connection we are going to be opening up this glove box panel right here uh, this is held down by several plastic clips that i'll show you how to remove them it's just using a pry tool uh, so for the intel computer your plug is going to be right here for the amd ones you're also going to want to remove this pillar right here and to do that you can just use this pry tool pry up on this clip right here then there is going to be a blue plug for the amd connection and then as well as a white plug here for the power for the amd connection remove those four plastic screws you can use a pry tool to remove them once the panel is removed you will see the led light connector which can be removed by pinching on the middle tab and pulling it out then the speaker plug can be disconnected by simply pulling on the plug now that we have removed this glove box panel for intel versions we don't have to remove this side door panel so all we have to do for the intel version is we're going to route this towards the top and that's also true for amd version but for amd we still have to remove this and make those two connections so for intel let's go ahead and pass this through the bottom so this is out from the bottom just leave a decent length uh, for this connection for the plug connection so we're going to be doing that here uh, there's enough length here now this will reach all the way to the top so we have this out again this is the plug that is the smallest plug and there are two plugs connected to each other so this is the plug that we're going to route from here towards our dash to the steering wheel this is the difficult plug we need to remove for the cars with an intel chip you just have to pinch on the middle tab and while holding it down Pull the plug out. Then take the new harness and plug the male Tesla adapter into the female adapter of the new harness. And then take the new male adapter and plug it into the Tesla computer. Make sure to align the plug straight to prevent bending Tesla pins. Again, this is super tedious and requires a lot of patience. At the end, it should make a complete circuit. So for the AMD version, what you're gonna do is remove this pin right here that will allow you to remove this door panel. And right around here, you're going to see a blue plug. And that's what you're gonna connect this plug to, the blue plug. And then on the side, you are going to see a white plug right about here. And that's where you are going to use this white plug to bypass that plug on the door panel. Now we need to route this cable towards the steering wheel. And to do that, Again, just drop this cable towards the steering wheel and uh, still leave some cable in the down. And then you can use some masking tape or electrical tape to just center this cable. So the, the goal is you don't want this cable to be touching any of this clip hold here. So you want to put this away. Uh, this masking tape is not going to hold the cable down and we don't need to. Uh, but this is just so that the cable doesn't move and it doesn't interfere with any of this clip. So Go ahead and do that all around over to there and then we're going to make that connection in the steering wheel so we just need to make sure that it doesn't interfere with any of this dash clips um, so hold it down using masking tape or electrical tape to make this super easy to install what you're going to do is go to your settings and hit this steering wheel column so when you do that it gives you that option on how to adjust the steering wheel and you're going to come over here and point this towards the left so when you do that as you see, steering wheel comes out. So it makes it easier for you to install this product. Now, the whole length of steering wheel is out. We can easily access this now. There are two clips right here, the plastic clips, and you need to remove those for this installation. Uh, the removal is not that difficult. You just have to use a pry tool that came with the kit. Again, uh, just to pry on this clips and uh, the clips come out really easily. So. As you saw, the clips are undone. Uh, do the same thing on this side for this clip. So the clips are out and you can remove this panel. So that panel is removed. So the easiest way that I have found to remove this over the years is again, just reach under here and then pry up using your hand. And as you can see, it comes out. Do the same thing on the other side. So. You can do that on both sides. Then you can use your pry tool, wherever you need to, to remove this. Um, again, 
I have removed this a lot on my car, so mine is probably really loose. So yours might be a little tight, but again, use the pry tool that they send to make this easier on you. Uh, this, as you see, this is this is a little bit of a work in progress, even even for me. Uh, and I have removed it multiple multiple times. Uh, this this clips. There is some holes here where the clips are just holding into its place. So you just gotta pop it out. And uh, as you saw, it, it didn't take much, but mine is loose. So this this clips that you see here, this V-shaped clips are the ones that are going on this openings here to, to hold this panel together. Now, this is the, the OEM one that we just removed, but we still have to remove this part and then install it here. Uh, the new kit does not come with this leather part and it's a very straightforward process, uh, but if you look at it, everything else is exactly the same. So this is perfectly aligned with this front piece. So we're essentially replacing this plastic piece on the front uh, with the new kit, but we still need this leather piece. And to remove the leather piece um, in the side, there is this little hooks. So all you have to do is lift up on the hook and then this one comes out and then do the same thing. Again, lift up and undo this. And then this clips in the middle, um, we have removed ours a lot. So they're probably loose but the way they remove is you pinch on it and then you push it. So again, pinch here and then you push it and then this is out. So we're gonna take this and exactly like how we just removed it from this panel, um, we're gonna go ahead and uh, install it here. So we just have to push this one through the hole. So there are, there are these clips uh, that needs to be pushed in um, from this. So we're gonna push it in. So that does go in here, we're going to push it in and then we're going to pull up and align that again, pull up and clip that and then push it a little bit to make sure uh, they go in well. So this is tight and secure. Now we can go ahead and install this on our car. Now we have connected everything downstream and we have this plug and this plug here. So. What we're gonna do is take this display and before we put it here and fully install it because it's gonna be a pain in the butt to remove it later, what we're gonna do is test it to make sure that this is working properly. Now to install this, it's a pretty straightforward process. There's this plug that has a little notch right here. You wanna align those two notch and then this clip and then just push it in. This does not go the other way, so it won't install here, so you can't get this wrong. And then as you saw, this is powering up and we are good to go. Now this goes in exactly how it came out earlier. All you have to do is make sure that this wire is coming from this very center here. Then you are going to slide this into here and you can also remove this wire totally out so that later uh, troubleshooting is gonna be easier. So take this plug out and then you just make your way here and put this throughout. So. We're gonna push this here. Uh, looks like it is aligned pretty well here. Um, and what we need to do is just make sure there's a little arch here that it goes in. So here, the arch went in and just push it, push it down so that everything is secure. Don't make the mistake of pushing it down uh, before everything is aligned. So make sure on both sides, everything is aligned and you can see that it is in the right place then push it down because if you accidentally push it here and if this is not aligned, then you're gonna have to remove it and it's not the easiest thing to remove. So just make sure that everything is aligned before you're gonna push it in. As you hear, there is the clips uh, every time this is clipping down. So just make sure that you can hear those clips when it's going down. So this clips, as they came out, they go in, in this hole, you push it in, and then you just push onto this clip. Do the same thing on the other side. Now we can go ahead and install this dash by again, just sliding it into its place, align the dash on where it needs to go, and it shouldn't be a very difficult process for it to align and clip it down. So just make sure 
it can clip down um, on all directions and if it is standing up a little bit on some directions then you know that the cable came on the way so just make sure that there is no cables that are on the way um, and if there are you want to align those cable and make sure they become flush so this dash is flush for us there is no gap in here uh, that it wasn't there before so we are good to go on our end now we just need to install this side panels and we are done with the install so this is what it looks like by default but we are going to change those settings as you can see it shows kilometer per hour um, so we are gonna also change that the range the temperature into fahrenheit and i'll show you how to do that so driving through the street this is what you see so the miles per hour is here the gear uh, shows the car's information um, i'm gonna see if i can figure out a way to change the car's color to red i'm not sure it supports that but the time matches so there's that 423 uh, it's 423 now it's not just the military time that we had on the earlier version the fahrenheit matches exactly what the car is showing um, and it is pretty aligned with what we see on the car so there's no lag with the information and you can see everything really clearly the range that is displayed here um, is the actual range that we see here as well um, so that is great but you can see that the headlights turn on on both um, the tesla as well as this display and everything is very accurate on what we can see on the car versus this display so from the driver's perspective as you can see this is so much bigger now um, compared to the last one we reviewed and a perfect size for an instrument cluster as you can see it you can still see it from the top um, so this is my view right now looking at it i can see it very very clearly this is another view from the driver's perspective um, as you can see this is a pretty decent size where you can actually see things and uh, not block so much airflow um, like other ones that mount on the actual dash so this is a, this is a great instrument cluster Another big benefit of this display is that you can actually control the height. So you can adjust how far you want to go, how far in or out do you want. And it's not a fixed mount. You have flexibility in terms of adjustment compared to the displays that install here. I mean, those displays, the 10.25 the inch, the Linux displays, they have their own purposes, right? They're great for what they do for CarPlay and all that. But this display, I really like it because you can also adjust the height and uh, this this makes it more desirable for many people so we have activated the plaid mode and if we put our car into drive and I start driving the plaid mode activates and it shows right here that's a pretty cool ui that is only found on tesla model s and x plaid so this is what they call the ui1 um, now we're going to change it to ui2 and show you what that looks like this is the ui2 i actually really like this ui it looks much more hd and it looks very futuristic so this is pretty cool as you can see there's that big blue circle in the middle and uh, you can see everything very clearly right in the middle you can also see the tire pressure so that's pretty cool um the, this is ui2 this is the dark mode for ui1 uh, so that's the first ui and when the dark mode turns on, this is what it looks like. This is the dark mode of the UI2. This is how it looks like with just the black background. This is everything that you see on UI1. Uh, so you see your temperature here, this is the speed limit. You got your range, the current speed, the gears on the top. So if you go between different gears, you can see it right away there. So let's reverse, this is park. Right here is your time, this is your headlight and fog light, and in the bottom you got your range percentage. Now if you are not wearing a seat belt, as soon as you let go of your seat belt, you will also get that seat belt warning sign. Um, and when you are in, in drive, again, it's the same thing, you just see everything. When the turn signals are activated, you will see it on the very top there. So that's everything the UI1 has. Now the UI2 has pretty much the same information except you can see the PSIs, the car's tire pressure, there's your time, again, your headlight, fog light, seat belt, the temperature, the gear here, the range, uh, you see the mileage right here, the speed, your speed limit, 
Um, and the only thing that is added here is also the car's following distance. So if we were to change that following distance to three, uh, as you saw, that, that it actually updates and it matches with the car. So that is addition that you have with UI2. And then turn signal, again, this is still in the top. To enter the settings menu, all you have to do is press and hold this scroll wheel towards the right. So press and hold towards the right and you will go into the settings menu. And to go between the menu, you have to just use this scroll wheel. So you can go between different things and to change between that, then you can just do left to right. So left and right to change and then to go between the menu is just the scroll. These are all the settings that are available for this display. First of all, you can change the temperature setting from Fahrenheit to Celsius. You can change the time zone. If it is not accurately showing your time zone, you have an ability to change that. You also can change the theme. So if you want a bright, the dark, or the auto, you can change that. Tire pressure, if you want PSI or bar. Can, I'm not sure what this means. So I'm just leaving it as default. And then the mileage, you can do either kilometer or miles. Then language, you can either do English, looks like Chinese, whatever that is, and English again. Um, and then the format, you can either do a 12 hour format or 24 hour format. UI is UI1 and UI2. So it only offers two different UIs. And then plaid, uh, if you wanna keep it on or off. So with plaid off, you won't see that cool UI when you drive off with on, you will see that and then exit right here. So here is a quick comparison between the older, the version one display versus this newer version two. As you can see, it is a lot taller. So just at the same level, that one is a lot taller. And um, looking from the front view, you see a lot more information on this one versus this one. So after installing this display and driving around with it, playing around with all the settings and all the functionality, I, I really like it. This is the same thing that this version one of the display did, but this new display is much bigger. And that was, again, one of the biggest complaints that we had with this version one was this screen was just way too small to be an instrument cluster. Um, for some people, this was a great size, for, but for many people, uh, you wish that it was a little bit bigger, including myself. So this one, it delivered on that. It is a much larger screen, but at the same time, it is not enormous, right? Some of the people have uh, commented on my videos um, where they do not like this 10.25 inch uh, steering wheel or, or the dash mounted screens that we have reviewed in this channel, or even the nine inch Linux displays that we have reviewed because it is too big and it blocks too much airflow sometimes. But this one is not huge. It is still a small size display, but it is bigger than this display that we reviewed. And that is what we had asked for. So I'm really glad that they incorporated the feedback that we have provided on version one a few months ago and they already have the solution where it's a larger size display. I like how they added the plaid mode to this so it it gets some of us excited. It's a customized product so that when you look at it and you, you get that plaid feel on your Model 3 or Model Y. Uh, I know it's just a UI but still for customizing people who are into customizing their car um, that, that means something right. And then um, they also added that extra UI. So now you can go between UI1 and UI2. Uh, it, it looks more integrated and uh, it, it looks like it came with the car. Uh, and we have said that the same thing with this one. So this is a very, very integrated display. I really like it. Now, a couple of things that I wish it had. And, and one of the biggest feedback that we had on the last one was make this display larger and add Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Um, and so didn't include that in this version. Um, I'm sure there is another version coming in the future that has Android Auto and Apple CarPlay here that's mounted here. So that was one of the things. Another one was uh, we wanted the autopilot chime, the warning chime to be fully integrated to this one and, and it is not. Uh, it just shows that the autopilot is available but when you turn on the autopilot it doesn't it doesn't do any of that. It doesn't show you any of that indication that the car is in autopilot. So in future version, I hope to see that from Hansho. So what do you all think about this display? Would you get it for your Tesla Model 3 or Model Y? 
what are the features that you like on this display, what do you not like about this display, and what would you like to see in the future production of this display. Uh, there is a software update uh, column, uh, it's a USB-C port that this can take, so Hansho can make certain changes, but I wouldn't expect a lot of changes in the future unless there is a configuration, hardware configuration changes. But if you would like Hansho to consider features, please let me know in the comment section below and I'll pass those on to Hansho. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did and would like to see more videos like this in the future, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share our videos with your friends and families, and we'll be back again with another Tesla accessory.